أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله حي على السلاة حي على السلاة حي على الفلا حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله أعوذ بالله السميع عليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مذيل له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وهو مالك الملك وله الحمد حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وهو على كل شيء قدير ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده وحبيبه ورسوله لا نبي بعده بلغ 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 الإيمان والصدقة وشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله لا نبي بعده بلغ رسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبئهم وسلك من حجهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين خير كلام كلام الله وخير هادي هادي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محتثاتها فكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار رديت بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نبيا ورسولا وبقرآن كتابا وكفرنا بكل طواغيت على الأرض فمن يكفر بالطاغوت ويؤمن بالله فقد استمسك بالأروة وثقا لم في سام لها والله سميع عليم وأما بعد قال حق تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ We seek refuge in Allah from Satan the accursed. We begin with the name of Allah, most gracious and most merciful. All praise and glory be to Allah. We praise and we glorify His holy name. We beseech His forgiveness for our shortcomings and our mistakes. We ask his guidance in all matters. We bear witness to his oneness and unity without associating any partners with him in any way, shape, or form. And we bear witness to the prophethood of Muhammad bin Abdullah alayhi salatu wasalam. May the choices of peace and salutations be upon him, his purified family, righteous companions, and all those who follow in his footsteps until the day of judgment. As to that which follows, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds, instructs us in his holy book, O you who believe, 
Be conscious of Allah. Have taqwa in Allah. And let each and every one of you look to what you have prepared and sent forth for your tomorrows. And in this process, remain conscious of Allah. Stay conscious of Allah during this process of preparing for your tomorrows. And know that Allah is well aware of all things. My dear respected brothers and sisters, it is indeed a blessing to be with you today on this Yom al -Jumah. It is the first time, although I know some of you going back to the Somerset days, the first time that I have had the opportunity to be with you and the blessing to be able to share with you some thoughts today during this khutbah. I am conscious, as we should all be, that it is indeed a great blessing to be able to attend Juma on this, the greatest day of the week. While so many of our brothers and sisters throughout the world are denied and deprived of that opportunity, they're denied and deprived of that opportunity not because of their own doings, but because of the harms, the aggression, the forbidding of prayer on them by those who oppress them, by those who stand upon their necks and do not allow them to breathe. In some cases, it's prevention from going to the mosque itself while the mosques still stand. In other cases, it is oppression by the fact and denying them access to the mosque because the mosque no longer exists because they've been bombed into oblivion. And so we have to realize the blessings that we have, not only to count them, but to protect them. And we protect them in various ways. Khudu Hidrokum, as we've done, the leadership of this community has protected them by providing us those who provide security. But also we protect them by making sure that we do not allow our voices to be silent in the face of oppression and tyranny of our brothers and sisters throughout the world. For we as the Muslims have been described by our Prophet Muhammad والسلام, as being one body, one ummah. When one part of it is hurt, the rest reacts with sleeplessness, reacts with fever. Because all of our resources that can be given without endangering our own existence are shared, are sent, are, are given to those who are harmed. As we speak, our brothers and sisters in Gaza, which you know very well, have been denied since the first week of October the right to attend Salat al Jummah because. Those institutions, which according to all laws, including international humanitarian law, are to be protected even during times of war and conflict, were destroyed and were targeted. And the hundred plus mosques in Gaza were destroyed. But it was not only mosques alone, but it was churches. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for our brothers and sisters there who have survived. And may Allah have mercy upon the souls of those whom Allah has taken back to himself. To be included amongst the shuhadat, those who are next only in Allah's eyes in this world and the next to the NBA. Nabiyin wa siddiqin, shuhada and siddiqin become second and third. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be means through which they who are silenced can be heard. For we are free, they are not. We can speak, they cannot. And it is our responsibility to do so. In our religion of Islam, we have this concept of paying forward. For those of you who don't know what that means, it is simply this, encapsulated in the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, amongst many, Whosoever desires that a difficulty be removed in their lives needs to remove the difficulty in the lives of another. 
Something's going wrong with our lives. We want our masjid to be preserved till the day of judgment. Then we need to speak for those whose masjids are being destroyed. If we choose to remain silent, when we have the opportunity and ability to speak, then what do we expect about our Allah helping us during our times of difficulties? My dear respected brothers and sisters, I know many of you are active in the struggle for speaking about justice, for working towards justice, but we must always be thankful, remember the blessings, and then call out those who are denying the blessings to others. The largest Muslim population, or maybe second largest Muslim population in the world, exists in a land where Sahaba were buried. And I'm not going to tell you which one. I'm asking you to do research and find out. Sahaba were buried, where masjids were constructed, even during the late part time of the Prophet Muhammad And that is in India. Over 200 million of our brothers and sisters, many of them may be some of your relatives, were denied a couple of weeks ago by a self-imposed sheltering in place to make Salat al-Jummah throughout, throughout most, of, most of the country. Because one of the historic masjids, and it's not the only historic masjid, was not only that it had been destroyed previously, but that on its foundations are being built a Hindu temple of which there is no historical or archaeological evidence that it ever existed in that location. And so they sheltered in place. Nearly 200 million Muslims did not make Juma out of fear. Fear that on the way to Juma, on the way home, they may not make it. And the masjid which they would go to and have gone to for centuries in their neighborhood may not be open in the days, the months, the weeks, the years to come. We must speak for them as they are denied the right to speak for themselves and as the power of social media is very much dictated by that regime over there, a fascist regime by any description and understanding of the word. Our brothers and sisters in Xinjiang province, what they call East Turkestan, living for thousand years plus in that part of the world, are deprived, the Uyghur community, are deprived in the millions of the right not only to go to masjid, and many of the masjids have been turned into museums or into other types of facilities, including garbage dumps. But in their very homes, the Qur'ans, which the 15 million used to read in Arabic language, the Qur'an is a fixture of every Muslim household, have been taken out. They are not allowed to say the word by the, by the Chinese Communist Party. They are not allowed to say the word, As-salamu alaykum, which we take for granted as Muslims. If you walk out, and imagine yourself walking out this building, or out of your home, and you say to your spouse, or your loved one, or your children, As-salamu alaykum, and someone immediately takes you. And for two years, you are put in the re-education center, where you are deprived to say any word in Arabic. Where during the month of Ramadan, you are forced to eat every day pork and other types of products that are against your very teachings. When you are made to raise your hands and make a dua in a language you never spoke, the Chinese language because you speak the Uyghur language, and you're forced to say in the Chinese language, they say, raise your hands in these prison system concentration camps where three to four million have been cycled through already and two million currently are there. And say, we thank God, we don't thank God, we thank the Chinese Party for the blessing, Chinese Communist Party for the blessings we have. We thank Xi Jinping, the Prime Minister of China, for all the blessings that he has given us. And then they are instructed, wipe your hands over your face. And if they choose not to, both men and women, they find themselves subjected to tortures which I cannot speak of in front 
of this chutbah at this moment. And our brothers and sisters in other parts of the world, including the Rohingya community, who are also subjected to genocide like the Uyghurs in China, were forced to leave their ancestral lands and to migrate to another land that while they had some connection to, they were not from that land, to Bangladesh, which did open its doors and provide them a facility for a camp, but it is a camp with very, very difficult and squalid conditions. The largest refugee camp in the world, 1.4 million. Denied the right of being educated in their own language, nor the right of safe return to their homeland in Burma, Myanmar. And the list goes on. Denied the rights to pray. And we as Muslims in other parts of the world need to speak out. Rejib is a good time to begin, if we have not already done so, to set up for ourselves an action plan going forward. Because this idea of planning for the future is not something that is antithetical to Islam's teachings. The verse is very clear. O oh, you who believe, have taqwa in Allah and prepare for your tomorrows. Our tomorrows, the scholars of tafsir, of chronic exegesis, tell us, include different things, Encom encom enc encompasses different things. One, our tomorrow is the akhirah. So we prepare the good deeds, which is two types. Ibadah, acts of worship, and amal salih righteous actions. Righteous actions are that which takes place when we're not in prayer, but as a continuation of the prayer. And you know, as I do, there are many hadith regarding this. Speaking truth to an oppressor is amongst the highest of those actions. Our faith is about saying and believing, but it is about doing. Some will say, no, it's only about your heart. Your heart is tied to your body in which it resides, and your body influences the heart by the actions it performs in the world. They're not separate from one another. When the Prophet says, Allah loves al-mu'min qawi, a strong believer over mu'min da'if, he's not talking about the heart alone, he's talking about the whole, bucket, the whole package, body and soul. We make dua, we supplicate, we make salah, but then we carry out what happens after salah. There's various proofs for this, but one which I know many of you know, but I share it by way of reminder to myself and you. Inna salati alil munkar. The salah is that which serves as a protection against shameful deeds and wrongful doing. Shameful deeds and wrongful doing that take place when? Not during the Salah. After the Salah in the world. How is my Salah doing? Let me ask your neighbors. How's he doing? Is he a person of truth and justice or, or is she a person of truth and justice? Or someone who speaks silently, hides in their silo. Not my business when they see wrong. Or a person who engages with the world around them. And people say, thank God for a neighbor like you. Who takes care of my rights. When I'm not here. And when I'm here, treats me with kindness and with justice. And is not ashamed to do so by claiming and stating clearly, المسلمين, I am amongst the believers. I am amongst the Muslimin. What about our families? Are our families the ones who thank Allah for our existence? Our spouses and our children? Or do they say, I wish this person would get out of the way? 
even as some of us may come to the masjid, which is a good thing to make salah. In jama'ah, do our families, when we leave them, relieve, uh, release a, ho a, a word of, uh, a sigh of relief? Alhamdulillah, he's gone. I hope they talk to him after salat in the masjid so he don't come home again till later when I'm already asleep because I can't stand the tyranny of that person who lives in this house with me. Ask ourselves those questions. And then we will see if our amal is salih, amal is righteous or is not. And I say this to you even as I remind myself. The month of Rajab, the Prophet Muhammad mentioned, is the month in which Ramadan begins. What, Brother Safid? Ramadan begins? Yes, Ramadan begins. Because at the start of the month of Rajab, we are informed he made the following dua. Allahumma barak lana fi Rajab wa Shaban wa baligh Ramadan. Oh Allah, give us the blessings of the month of Rajab and Shaban and allow us to be witness to the month of Ramadan. In English, we have this device called in parentheses to say what you wanted to say in the original sentence, but you need, it needs additional explanation and you don't want to misquote the direct quote. So in parentheses after that, therefore, begin preparing for the month of Ramadan by making sure all of your matters are in order, starting with Rajab. Spiritual matters, we should increase our fasting during the month of Rajab. It is one of Ushur al-Hurm, one of the sacred months in which we are informed by Allah not to harm ourselves therein. Not to oppress ourselves therein. How do we oppress ourselves? In very simple shorthand, by doing wrong. Doing that which is just to ourselves and to others. Shaban. The next month, and, Re and Rajab, by the way, is also the month in which the Salah, which we pray daily, came down. It was during as al asra wal Miraj, the famous night journey and heavenly ascension of our Prophet Muhammad wasalam, that we received the commandments of prayer. It was also during the month of Rajab we recognize that the Holy Quran sent by Allah touched three places on earth in terms of revelation. One was in Mecca, the other was in Medina, and the third was in Al-Quds. The Holy Quran was revealed in three places on earth, and one of those places is under direct siege. And the brave and heroic people, the Musallin of that masjid, and those who do not make salah in that masjid, although they would like to, but they're deprived to, attempt every day to ensure that that holy place is not broken. A holy place which the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, said we should make ziyarat, religious visitation, a sacred journey to only three places. He said the Kaaba, his mosque in Medina, and Al-Aqsa. I ask you, Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless all of us who have not yet made hajj to make hajj and have hajj mabrur. And for those of us who have made hajj already, that it be Hajj Mabrur. But I would advise you, as I advise myself, and I've done this myself, having made Hajj with my wife in 2018 and having visited Al Aqsa in 2023, before you make your second, third, fourth Hajj, as Allah has blessed you with means and situation, circumstance, make your intention to visit Al Aqsa before then. Go to Al-Aqsa before you make your second, third, fourth Hajj. Visit Al-Aqsa. You have an American passport. It allows you access that other peoples around the world don't have access. So you can see with your eyes, feel with your heart, experience with your body what it means to be Palestinian, what it means to be a defender of Al-Quds. Nobody has to convince me, although I've been speaking on the Palestine issue for a long time, up here what it means to be Palestinian and what they are doing for us. As our Prophet Muhammad mentioned, there will be a people on earth, and he said this is the Sahaba, who until the day of judgment will stand for truth and fight against oppression. And the only thing which will harm them is deprivation of food and water, hunger and thirst. He said they will be like this 
and he put his fingers together, that you do not know where one of them begins and the other ends in terms of their mutual support for one another. When I went to Al-Quds and surrounding areas, I, like many, hoped to give to the orphans in their hands dollars as a form of sadaqah. But I went outside after Salat al-Jumma and al-Aqsa and I didn't see the people begging. I didn't see the children who I know their parents and their fathers and their mothers were killed or taken away and imprisoned and they don't know for how long. And this is supposedly in the safe lands, the safe areas of East Jerusalem and the West Bank, which is not safe at all. And I didn't see them and I asked my daughter-in-law's family who's Palestinian and who lives just minutes away from Al-Aqsa, where are they? Where are the children that I can give some sadaqah to? She said, give it to the masjid. I said, I don't see them on the streets at night. They said, we have something called izza, dignity and self-respect. We do not allow the children to be on the streets. I said, they're not your relatives. And I know she was keeping some in her own home. She said, no, but all of the children are our children. And if we have something for our own kids, we have something for those who no longer have parents to care for them. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Teaching us by example. As the people of Gaza teach us by example, and I'm sitting down, I'm conscious of the time. Teach us by example what it means to connect to the Quran. In all the pain and the suffering, to change the world's opinion. To allow Muslims and other people of conscience to work together hand in hand, arm in arm like never before. Calling out for justice. A friend of ours, Imam Jawad, you know him, from 877Y Islam, informed us not too long ago at a meeting that I was at that on average 877Y Islam receives phone calls for Quran about 400 to 600 a month, depending on the month. In the month of November, and he told us this information in the beginning of December, they received 7,000 calls for Qurans. 7,000 calls. Normally it's 400 to 600 a month. In the month of November alone, they received 7,000 calls for Qurans. Who's making that da'wah? You? Me? Our shuyukh? With our respect and love for them? And they will tell you, it's not us. It's the children of Gaza. It's the people of Gaza who stand and face down one of the most powerful militaries in the world and show us what is possible when people believe even under the intense pain and suffering they're receiving. Dear brothers and sisters, we have the opportunity to speak. They, they do not. We have the opportunity to be free, to organize, to mobilize. They do not. Do not miss your opportunity to be part of that struggle which ensures your future protects us here in America by protecting those in other parts of the world. On the way out after Juma, I have a table set up of information for Justice for All. It's an organization that I currently work with. We are the only Muslim human rights organization who has accreditation at the UN that's based here in North America. Please do take some of the literature regarding some of the situations and circumstances of brothers and sisters I've mentioned or take a picture of the QR code so you can see how you can be involved in different ways. And before I sit down, I was asked to make a dua for a special person. Our dear respected sister, Sabrina Mirza, lost her uncle Tariq in Pakistan. I'm happy to say and I'm honored to say she's part of our Justice for All team, an amazing sister who you should get to know if you don't already know she's part of your community and, and an incredible bright light being tutored and mentored by amongst others the late Suhaib Sultan, Imam and Muslim chaplain at Princeton University. So we ask Allah forgive her uncle and forgive all our brothers and sisters who passed away before us in the faith. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give full cure to all those who are sick and afflicted and remove from their sickness as if they had no sickness before. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless this community, to guide its leadership, to do what is right for each and every one of us, and what is right for our neighbors, our state, our nation, and the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand our faith and to implement it in the best of ways, in our salah and outside of our salah. Kulu kali hadha wa welcome.
الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا الذين اهتدينا لولا هدانا الله وقال رب اقعدون يستجبكم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وذيم سلطانك لا اله الا سبحان ان كنا من الظالمين رب اغفر وارحم وانت خير الراحمين رب اغفر رب اغفر وارحم وانت خير الراحمين رب اغفر وارحم وانت خير الراحمين ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا كفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الابرار ربنا اغفر لنا ولاخواننا الذين سبقونا بالايمان ولا تجع في قلوبنا غلنا للذين امنوا ربنا انك رؤوف رحيم اللهم ربنا هب لنا من ازواجنا وذريتنا كرة الاعين واجعلنا للمتقين اماما اللهم ارنا حقا حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا باطلا باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم ارزقنا حبك وحب رسولك وحب من ينفعنا حبك اليك ربي فحببنا وفي انفسنا لك ربي فذللنا وفي عيون الناس فعذبنا من سيء الاخلاق فجنبنا ومن صالح الاخلاق فقومنا وعلى صراط مستقيم فثبتنا وعلى اعدائك اعداء الاسلام اللهم انصرنا ولا تنصر علينا اللهم انصرنا اخواننا في فلسطين وغزه اللهم انصرنا ولا تنصر علينا اللهم امكر لنا ولا نمكر علينا اللهم زدنا ولا تنكسنا ولا تسلط علينا من لا يرحمنا اللهم اشرح صدورنا للاسلام اللهم حبب الينا الايمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكرهه الينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان اللهم اجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم اجعلنا من الصابرين اللهم اجعلنا من المتقين اللهم ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب القبر وقنا عذاب الميزان ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا انك انت التواب الرحيم وصل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله اكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون واقيم الصلاه ان صلاتي تنهى الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Astaghfirullah, Salat al-Jamir, Rahman al-Hamdulillah, Allah, make your life straight, inshallah. As-salatu la ilaha illallah, make your life straight, inshallah. Allahu Akbar, 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 مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدينا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره 
إنه كان توابا سمي الله لمن حميده الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله العظيم الذي لا إله إلا الله يقيم وتوب إليه اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك وتعالى يا ذا الجلال والإكرام على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن إبادتك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله عظيم تقبل منا منك إن شاء الله إن الله يمسك announcements from the masjid Assalamu alaikum. Jumma Mubarak. Jazakal khair, Imam Safit, for your beautiful khutbah. May Allah increase your ilm and give you barakah, inshallah. The newly elected board members will be sworn in this weekend, inshallah. Barakallah feek for all of the board members that are moving on. May Allah accept your time and your effort. And inshallah, increase your you know your dunya and your akhirah, inshallah. Just a few quick announcements. Uh, inshallah, please continue to support the masjid. Uh, we still need money for operations. Alhamdulillah, for those who have you know, already donated, please continue to donate. We still have debts that we need to meet. We still have the operations that we need to, um, we have to keep the lights on, brothers and sisters. Um, so please, you know, let, let, the, let these donations testify you on your uh, al-Qiyamah, inshallah. And you know, may Allah, inshallah, accept that you've kept Allah's house out of debt. 
and you know you continue to support the house of Allah. Um, we have the uh, sisters have a workout class tonight, inshallah, at 7 p.m. Uh, there is a registration available for that. There's a story time and craft uh, on the 9th at 5 p.m. Uh, the Fala Youth Initiative, the next meeting is on the 10th of February. And then finally, we have uh, youth ice skating uh, on the 11th of February. Uh, there's a tap device outside, so please, it's really easy to donate. You just tap your phone or you tap your credit card. Uh, if you have any questions, email us, call us. You can speak to me or one of the other board members. Uh, right turns only on your way out. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>